<laughs> it's a beautiful foggy day. Usually what that means for me. Actually, I should say every time that I run into fog, for some reason that I really don't completely understand, I run into a lot of spiritual attacks. It's kind of like almost as though fog or this differential between hot and cold kind of lukewarm creates a environment where light is diffused and because light is diffused I always think of fog as being like a spiritual deception it's the outward manifestation of a spiritual reality that's going on in the heavens as well as in the environment around us so for me <laughs> when I look at fog I go okay <laughs> where is it going to come from in other words I don't doubt the reality of it happening. I just watch for where it's going to manifest itself, so to speak. And, you know, in your life, you should be aware of that, that there is, to a certain degree, a reality of, of the enemy with powers and principalities and demonic activity and even worldly cooperation of trying to keep you mindful away from those things that cause light because eventually when you get the body of believers together and there's enough warmth generated it burns off the fog so to speak is that you're no longer foggy or groggy but you see one thing about fog on a Monday morning is that a lot of times people will react and their moods will affect them but you know one thing I found out about this time of year because I'm very moody this time of year I really don't I don't do Christmases. <laughs> People go, really? You don't do Christmas? <laughs> and you've been talking about it, you've been writing about it, you've been broadcasting it, you've been sharing it, you've been declaring it, you've been telling everyone, hey, enjoy it, you know? And it's like, no, I don't do Christmas. I'm not very good at it. I enjoy it. I participate in it. It's a part of the celebration of life that I believe is cyclical that every year this time of year frankly for me personally I kind of go you know it's my broke time of year and not because I went out and bought Christmas presents it's my downtime physically nah, not because it's Saturnalia or some feast of some whatever and not because it's dark time of year it just so happens that my cycle which we all go through seems to be you know a downtime so I've learned to live with that and to enjoy it and to incorporate it. You know, in, in Jewish life, it's a very real uh, awareness that if you're Orthodox or if you're into a spiritual side of Judaism that manifests itself, then yeah, you are aware of the different times of the seasons and the things, how they change, you know, how it goes from summer to spring to fall, you know, to winter, and that during those times even people seem to go through in their life summer and spring and fall and winter and that's annually as well as corporeally meaning their entire lifetime so for me yeah this time of year it's kind of kind of frustrating you know because here I am I'm somebody who really ought to be down and out and moody about you know the whole arena of Christmas and I'm out there sharing joy and telling everybody, hey, celebrate, man, let's go. <laughs> you know? Celebrate Christmas, celebrate. <laughs> no, but to share Jesus and to share Santa and to share Donald Duck and Mickey Mouse and to share Rudolph and Frosty and Hanukkah and the Hanukkah bush, you know, and <laughs> the menorah. Oh, wait, that's not a menorah, it's nine the Hanukkah and you know all the different things that are made up in order to celebrate this time of year you know and Advent and Midnight Mass and all the good stuff you know and what I do to get out of my mood is I try to help others with their mood because they might be down and out and you know that brings me to today's point was that you really shouldn't let anyone steal your joy you know you shouldn't let anyone be affecting you to change the direction that you've chosen to go 
you and God in the way that you walk through today. If you've determined that, you know, God wants you to walk in the enjoyment of life and the fullness of his spirit, and he wants you to <laughs> be at peace today, because when you see fog, I highly recommend you slow down and kind of take your time about everything you're doing, because something about fog is if you rush right into it, you're liable to get caught up and stumbling over something you didn't see coming. And that light in the distance might be closer than you think, and it might be traveling at a higher rate of speed. So for me, fog is a, is a time to maybe slow down and take a deep breath of it. Because if you smell fog, if you kind of breathe in the fog and taste and see, there's something good about fog, too. Even though I think of it as a time of being careful, I also enjoy it for the reality of what God made it to be. And it's like being in the clouds, you know, and walking one day off of this cloud that the fog has been weighted down with up into a higher one that would take me away into a place where Jesus and I would stay. And then we'd walk away from the first heaven into the highest heavens. But that's just me. <laughs> the way you're going to do today, I don't know. But I can tell you this. In this season, don't let the distractions of the world cause you to get frustrated. Don't let the abstractions in Christianity get you burdened down. But rather find your own way to walk with Jesus today so that you can participate in the times and the seasons that we live in. Because you're not a religious prude. You're not a legalist. You're not a, <laughs> you're not a long hair, one eyed, one horn, flying purple people eater. You're not out there to chew up people and, you know, eat them alive for your religious zeal. But you are called to love one another as Jesus has loved us. You are called to pray for one another as Jesus told us to pray. You're really called to be at peace in the midst of tribulation, for in the world you shall have frustration, aggravation, antagonism, even foggy ideas and really strange looking things happening. But you can know whether God speaks to you direct or whether he puts you into a time of holding like me sometimes he <laughs> God talks to me all the time but <laughs> but there are times where yes I'm like anyone else where God will just go all of a sudden it's like uh oh what happened God's not talking Lord <laughs> did I do something <laughs> I'm like you I think about it I talk about it, I wonder, and then you go back to, did God tell me something recently that he was going to do, and being quiet, or being still, or being silent, and so I feel when God does, you just trust him, That's what are you going to do, be frustrated? <laughs> the bottom line is, in your day, you always take the time to pray, to be still, to listen, to wait, and then to walk away with the calm assurance that because God is with you, he would never leave you nor forsake you. Rest a while. Come to me, all you who are labor and heavy laden, and I will give you, whoops, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden and overburdened, and I will cause you to rest. I will ease and relieve and refresh your souls. Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. Getting stress out of your life takes more than prayer alone. You could pray about it, you could talk about it, but you must do something about it. You must take an action to make changes and stop doing whatever it is that's causing the stress. You can learn how to calm down in the way you handle things. Jesus invited us to come to him if we are overburdened. He promised to refresh us if we are weary, worn out, or overworked. Take time to go to Jesus anytime you feel you are going over the edge of peace, 
and into the pit of stress. Let his presence refill you and refresh you. Every day, we should pay attention to where we are in the day. Because every day that we walk and live and breathe and have our being, we move and operate in his spirit. And if we yield to that spirit of God that is within us, then when he causes us to be still, well springs of living water refreshes our soul and comes pouring out of us to others around us. If we yield to what he's leading and telling us to do. If we've gone far down the road of our own actions and interactions with God and ignored what he had to say, then you might not have peace today. You might not have like that comfort in the midst of a foggy or groggy or season that you might not feel like you're full of peace, love, or joy. But the beautiful thing that you know about a tree is that if your tree, and you are a tree, if your tree has borne fruit in the past, if you have known peace, then your fruit, peace, will bear fruit again. Your tree will become fruitful. If your tree that you are has been loving, then in due season, when it's time, you will be loving. If your tree has known joy, then in due season, your tree will bear fruit again of joy. Because you see, a tree, an orange tree, an apple tree, a lemon tree, an avocado tree, the tree is known by its fruit, and if you've already known to be known by what your fruit is, then I think that's what kind of tree you are. So, don't be discouraged if your leaves are cast down, your branches are bare, and that the winters have come, and you stand there all naked, alone, seemingly without God. In due season, as James says, we shall reap what we have sown, if we faint not. So, don't be discouraged today, but be encouraged that whatsoever tree you are, whatsoever fruit you were born in your life, whatsoever God has done with you, God will see you through until you bear fruit again. No, you're not a fruit loop, but you could be a fruit tree, and I hope so. Because we've all been called to be trees of righteousness, bearing fruit that he may take and make into what he has chosen it to be. Thank <laughs> you.